Thank you very much. Further debate, the member for London North Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we meet here in Toronto in the dish with one spoon territory, and I'd also like to recognize the treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee peoples. I'm pleased to rise for my inaugural speech in this House, and I'd like to congratulate everyone assembled here on their recent election wins. I'd also like to thank the voters in London North Centre who have placed their confidence in me. We had a record voter turnout, and 47.6% of voters cast their vote for the NDP and for change for the better. I'd also like to acknowledge the outgoing member, Deb Matthews, who visited us here today. I started my campaign in the cold winter months after winning the nomination, and I was lucky to have the dedication and support of Durka, Sarah, Tina, Steve, Rod, Elliot, Robin, Helen, Bryn, Craig, Glenda, Barry, Mark, Kathy, Deb, Susie, Susan, Judith, and many, many more. We had a motivated and effective campaign team and riding association who were absolutely brilliant. Before and during the election, it was an honor to meet so many people at the door and hear about their concerns. I only have so much time here today, so I won't begin to name all of the great people who helped during the campaign. It was indeed a movement. London is a phenomenal city, and I'm proud to be one of three NDP members elected in London, alongside Peggy Sattler and Theresa Armstrong. London is along the 401 corridor, near to prime agricultural land, and centres on the forks of the Thames River, named so by John Graves Simcoe in 1793, thanks to the member from Haldeman Norfolk, and is also known as the Deshkanzi Bay, or Antlered River. Simcoe liked the place so much, he wanted to make it the capital of, of Upper Canada. Unfortunately, this did not happen, and some place called York was selected instead. <laughs> My writing is also home to Museum London, Western University, the London Health Sciences Centre, numerous libraries, schools, places of worship, nonprofit organizations, charities, and shelters. Everyone here knows about the London Knights in hockey and London Lightning in basketball. Sir Frederick Banting even discovered insulin in London, Ontario. On that note, London has a long history of innovative businesses. Newer companies include Infotech, Arcane Digital, Dipley, and many more in the digital creative and innovation sector. Workers are the people who built London. As a teacher, I was honored to belong to my local executive and be a delegate to our local Labour Council. We have great union strength in London, including ETFO, OSSTF, QP, Unifor, ATU, SEIU, OPSU, PSAC, COPE, CUPW, LIUNA, and many more. We are also developing quite a name for our beer. Of course, Labatt started it all off, but now London Brewing Co-op is a truly innovative business approach where the workers own and make decisions about the business in a democratic fashion. They're a brilliant community-minded organization that is revitalizing London's Old East Village. They also operate On The Move Organics, where you can order and have delivered locally sourced organic food, as well as the Root Cellar Cafe, where you can have that organic produce prepared. Anderson Craft Ales also brings delicious beer and life to London and is 100% family owned and operated. We also look forward to welcoming Silver Stacks and Powerhouse Brewing Company in London North Centre. London North Centre is also home to Aeolian Hall in the heart of Old East Village. Aeolian Hall, built in 1882, is well known for the talent it attracts, the phenomenal acoustics and the wonderful volunteer staff, which includes Shirley, whose mother ran for the CCF 40 years ago to the day of our most recent election. El Sistema, also offered at the Aeolian, provides a free, intensive, innovative, and accessible musical education for children and youth in London. It has earned TED, UNESCO, and Glenn Gould Awards. Not only do these gifted and talented artists change the lives of youth through musical instruction, the program provides daily meals and instruments free of charge. Everyone in London is pretty excited that we are going to be the host for the 2019 Juno Awards. We have too many talented artists and writers to call by name, 
and we are known for some fantastic productions such as Original Kids, the Grand Theatre, the Palace Theatre, and many more. I had the opportunity to meet thousands of Londoners over the course of the campaign. We value our health care in London. We watched as cut after cut from Conservative and Liberal governments have devastated our amazing facilities. As it stands now, London Health Sciences has a hallway transfer protocol, a form for staff to decide whether you belong in a hallway or in a room. This should be our first priority as elected officials, to make sure people are healthy and if they're sick, they can get better. We had an innovative program for patients who'd survived a cardiac episode. It was called the Cardiac Fitness Institute. Dr. Larry Patrick and Dr. Ross Bishop helped patients with their diet exercise, lifestyle, and it was a tight-knit community. They raised the majority of funding on their own, but were neglected by the previous Liberal government when London Health Sciences withdrew funding. First and foremost, this program prolonged and saved lives. I was so proud that Andrea Horvath, Peggy Sattler, Teresa Armstrong, and the NDP called attention to their story. I was also pleased to see the member from Elgin Middlesex London at one CFI event. When you compare the small amount of money this program cost in comparison to a cardiac event, it should be an easy decision. Unfortunately, we watched as this program was nearly lost. Now, if you're new to cardiac care, the provincial government funds the six-month CRISP program alone. Long-term care is another issue that Londoners care deeply about. The last Conservative government removed the 2.5 hours of direct care per patient per day, and the Liberal government did nothing to restore it. How can we, as elected officials, or even as a society, accept this? Seniors deserve to spend their golden years with dignity, with respect, and to enjoy their lives. They've earned it. Caring for our elder generation is not an option. It's our duty. Currently, London has suffered losses in the manufacturing sector, sector, largely from the previous Liberal government. People are struggling to find good jobs with decent pay and to build good lives. It is difficult for businesses to remain afloat with the sky-high prices of hydro, and I was so proud of Andrea's commitment to buy hydro back and lower hydro bills genuinely. I hope that my colleagues across the floor will realize that Ontarians built the hydro system, so Ontarians should own it. In London North Centre, we have a broad spectrum of socioeconomic status. We have mansions and we have community housing. People struggle with food insecurity and finding affordable housing is a crisis in London. If people do not have a place to call home, nothing else matters. I strongly believe in housing first. In a province as rich as Ontario, no one should be left out in the cold. The City of London is also struggling with an opioid crisis. We're lucky to have dedicated and community-minded individuals who have started supervised injection sites, a place where addicts build relationships with caring individuals who can then help them with wraparound supports. Six people who have overdosed have been saved and 100 people who have been put in touch with housing and supports to combat addiction and mental illness. We can never put a price on a human life. The evidence is clear. The province bears the cost of addiction, whether it's through initiatives or the criminal justice system. I'm glad that people are finally realizing that the, this crisis affects us all and hope the government listens to experts and those with lived experience. Addiction is not limited to a certain segment of the population, and just because someone is an addict doesn't mean they want to die. London is a vibrant city, home to a diverse population. Unfortunately, we've also seen a rise in racism. I want to restate to everyone here, no matter where you come from, you have a home in London, Ontario. Thank you again to everyone who put their trust in me. I look forward to representing everyone and being a champion for London North Centre and for London, the heart of southwestern Ontario.